If you've ever seen any of my weapon guides, or any of my tier lists, or anything of the sort, you've probably heard me say the phrase, no gun in Phantom Forces is bad. And while to an extent an asterisk may be applied to that statement, I'm looking at you, Zip22, I stand by my claim. And though that may be the case, I still get comments of people screaming about how Phantom Forces is so pay to win. And in many videos, I've disproved that. So we're going to do a direct comparison between the highest level and the lowest level guns in each category, and see which one is better. Or, if it just straight up changes nothing. We'll start with the first thing you see whenever you're a new in the Assault Rifle category, the AK-12. It's obviously unlocked at rank 0, but for being rank 0, you get a lot of cool features. You get a full-size 30-round magazine, fairly high damage, and a time to kill that actually gets faster with one of the fire modes it gives you, allowing you to have a 1000 RPM fire rate, and still with minimal recoil. It definitely gets the job done. Now though, for the highest level weapon in the Assault Rifle category, the G-11, this mysterious box of Black Ops 1 memories and German space magic is really unique in the way that it works. Being a burst weapon firing at 2100 RPM, it basically acts as a one-shot, heavy recoil impulse. Its damage is a little bit on the lower side for this category, but with its burst, three shots is basically condensed down to one, and that brings the time to kill to basically nothing. Plus, it has a torso multiplier. Both have their benefits and playstyles tailored to them, but for me, I'm gonna have to say that I enjoy the G11 more. Next for the SMGs, we have the Level 0 MP5K, another bastion from Black Ops 1 Nostalgia, and a haven for low-level power, fire rate, and easy kills. In terms of what it is and how it plays, it's basically exactly what you think of whenever you think of a video game SMG. Minus the comical mafia NPC wielding it. It fires at almost a thousand RPM, and while damage could stand to be a tad higher, you've got a few conversions that'll change the way that it overall plays, but it's just kind of a solid choice regardless, and a great one for new players. Now, things get weird at the higher end here, with the highest level SMG being unlocked at rank 155, the 5.0. While being a really sick model, it feels super powerful, but it is stupid clunky. By default, it has a two round burst fire mode that has fairly high damage, but a low fire rate allowing for two shot ability up close. <laughs> <clears throat> if you use the uh, torso multiplier, but it's also got a guaranteed one shot to the head at an okay range. Why is it weird though? With its heavy recoil and the need to hold down left click in order to use the two shot burst, it makes it very clunky to time both the burst and to compensate for recoil at the same time. Cool, yes, better than the MP5K, no. A staple of any modern FPS is going to be its M4A1. Every game has one, every American seems to have one, and so of course Phantom Forces has to have one. At level zero as well, why not? It's a carbine with some actual really solid damage for close to medium ranges and has fairly low recoil, even completely stock. It's pretty balanced I'd say for what it is, and it's a fantastic starting place for new players, or even players like me that are very high level. If you know anything about high level crap in this game though, you'll know exactly where this is going. Yep, it's an M4A1 that fires cans or uh, cannonballs if you're so inclined. It's unlocked at rank 222, the highest level gun in the entire game, and probably has the most customization in the entire game as well. It's fantastic, it's a great meme weapon, if you build it right, it can be actually pretty overpowered, but at the end of the day, it's a single shot, very low muzzle velocity, blank firing, can launching party trick, which is, yes, very, very fun, but not very practical, so for this, I'm gonna have to say the M4A1 is better. LMGs are some of those categories that almost every gun is unique. You've got 161 round pan magazine, 22 firing Ruski Avtomat, you've got upscale British bull pups, but the level zero Colt LMG is a fantastic middle ground between all of them. It's got great damage, middle of the road fire, Rate, low recoil, mid-sized magazine, and enough walk speed to be used in a fairly fast-paced manner, especially for its category. Now, if we scale things up a little bit, we get the Stoner 96, unlocked at rank 196, and featuring its own unique playstyle, low fire rate, and some pretty high muzzle velocity and damage range. However, since the movement speed is so low, some of the lowest in the entire game, it basically forces you to use the playstyle of a TF2 sentry gun, which is perfect, really, with its limited recoil. If that's how you play, it's great for that. But again, I think these are both very good but the Colt LMG I think is a bit more well-rounded for most people and is going to be better for general use, whereas you really only have one playstyle that's able to be used with the stoner. Another point for the low-level weapons. Battle rifles are going to be the first one here that you don't unlock at level 0 by default. You have to be at least level 2 for this one, and for that you get the M14. Yet another Black Ops 1 dose of nostalgia injected straight into my low-poly veins. It's just overall amazing, heavy but usable recoil, great damage, and a unique conversion for it. Though it doesn't really require any crazy attachments or any extensive time using it to really get a feel of what it is and how it plays. The highest rank battle rifle though, which really isn't that high as rank 107, that being the FAL 50. It has almost the exact same damage as the M14, almost the exact same fire rate and multipliers and damage range, etc, etc, etc. It's very close to being the exact same weapon, just with slight tweaks to the numbers. It's even got similar recoil when firing from both of their 20 round magazines. The M14, however, just feels a little bit more polished and usable, whereas the FAL just feels a little bit more 
clunky. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad, but I would say that the M14 provides just a little bit better gameplay. For you though, it could just come down to which fire rate you like better since they're so similar. Woo, shotguns, yeah. Okay. To get your first shotgun, you have to be at least level one, which shouldn't take you more than a matter of minutes. And it is the KSG. I know that there's a lot of KSG fans out there. I do see it pretty frequently in game, but I personally am not the biggest fan. I know, I know. Save the comments for later. The big boy though, the level 189 USAS 12. The superior AA-12 is a fully auto 10 round magazine, overpowered meat grinder with a bundle of hate in each shell. Its spread is pretty bad, but who cares about spread when you can shred literally everything in front of you? Honestly, the meat grinder 9000 trademark, that is the USAS-12, is just objectively a better weapon. Snipers are where people are going to get mad though, because every single sniper in this game has an insane standum that thinks that what they use is the best in the game. They're all wrong though, the Boxy Buster is the best sniper. But if we have to compare though, the intervention being unlocked at rank 0 is a pretty stout, sturdy, stunning stud, simple, silly sniper with sustainable damage, doing a maximum of 99.9 .9 with its torso multiplier, and having great headshot potential, if a bit slow since it was nerfed. Again, it performs how you'd expect a sniper in an FPS game to work whenever you're like, I want to use a sniper, this is what you get. Crank it up times 1000 though, and you've got this monster, the NTW-20. It's an anti-material, anti-vehicle, downright anti-human sniper, with a minimum of 99 damage and a maximum of over 1000 damage, including the headshot multiplier. Very silly. But if you want to upgrade the whimsical factor, the quirky 20 by 110 conversion makes it always, always a one-shot kill. No matter the range, no matter the angle, no matter if it's a headshot or a foot shot, trick shot or a hard scope, rain or snow, you we will die. die. Of course, with great power comes great requirements. For one, you have to be ranked 220 to unlock this kind of crazy. But the second thing, and which is probably a deal breaker for some people, surprisingly, is the fact that you have to be near some kind of ledge in order to be able to scope in, or put a barrel on it that removes all distance accuracy. Fantastic. Honestly, the NTW-20 wins this one hands down. The intervention has been nerfed a few too many times for my personal liking. It's great, but it's not what it once was, and for that, the big menace wins again. DMRs are very similar to snipers, and are, for the most part, unique from each other. So the level 3 unlock of the MK-11 is going to be far different than its high-level counter part. But is it better though? So first we've got a 330 fire rate and a 20 round magazine with a solid damage and solid multipliers. It's got fairly low penetration without armor piercing, so this is mostly going to be a stare at your enemy and laser kind of thing. Great gun, great conversions, I mean, come on, depleted uranium, it's not a war crime if it's Roblox. Another fairly low level, highest level gun here though, the SCAR SSR being unlocked at rank 85, has big boy damage, big boy muzzle velocity, and crazy damage range, but a lower fire rate. It's also just really good, all compensated for, of course, with insane vertical recoil, goofy ah weapon, fire ah weapon. It's just, it, it, it's beautiful. Between these two though, honestly, <laughs> I, it's a draw. They're both insane. You're not going to have a bad time with either of these. For the secondaries though, starting with pistols, we technically have three choices here. Both the G17 and M9 are both level zero, first category that has two level zero weapons, and the Boxy Buster is technically free as long as you redeem the code from having a physical one. But to keep it simple, we're gonna just use the G17. Of course, since it's a pistol, they have to give it some level of usability to make it not just complete garbage. So they've given it three shot potential with both a headshot and torso multiplier. Sadly, it has a pretty dated model, but it's nothing that a colorful skin can fix, of course. Pretty average, but still work very, very well. At rank 201 though, oh, I don't like where this is going, we get the AF2011A1, which is basically just two 1911s glued together. Awesome. Any numbers you see here are basically multiplied by two, so for the damage, if you hit both shots, it's 84 damage. And of course, that's before it's torso or headshot multipliers, because when you include those, are you seeing what I'm getting at? One shot ability, baby, woo! It's basically completely uncontrollable recoil under sustained fire though, so it's either to be used very slowly or at point blank. To that degree, unfortunately, I have to give it to the two glued 1911s, the AF2011A1, because while the G17 is great, like actually great, for a quick swap out weapon while reloading, I, I'm not reading all that again, is, is just better. It's just, <laughs> I, it's just better. Machine pistols, though, I feel are going to be a very different story, because with the G18C being unlocked at rank 17, the first machine pistol that you get, and providing all of the fun with the G17, just with 1100 RPM fire rate, it, it's, it's fun. It's always a good time. Though, the rank 110 arm pistol, cool, yes, interesting, yes, better? Hmm. It's a 5.56 bullpup pistol, somehow, with a 20 round magazine, insane damage, and an above medium fire rate, and can be built with very little recoil, actually surprisingly little recoil, kind of going into this, I was not expecting that. But you have all of that, plus an overall faster reload for both empty and non-empty, and the only thing that you're giving up is one point in movement speed and one point damage range. Both get extended mag 
magazines as well, but the arm pistol can also change ammo type with its extended magazine, whereas the G18C has an extended magazine as an ammo type. Very disappointing. The arm pistol wins here though. The G18C holds a special place in my heart, but the arm pistol, once you have both of these built, is just objectively better. The revolvers are all very good, like really, really good. However, we have to try and pick one over the other, so let's do our best here. First, we've got the rank four unlock of the MP412 Rex, your first revolver that you get, and it's a fantastic ancient model that brings back a lot of good memories from those early Phantom Forces days. And really, it's just rounded super well. Maybe not the model, but in terms of playstyle. It has a six round cylinder with high damage, very high fire rate for a obviously semi-auto revolver, and fairly manageable recoil, just great for level four. And on the other hand, we have the Executioner. And of course, being unlocked at rank 137. It's just an overall better model with really big boy damage now, though a pretty low fire rate while still retaining a six round cylinder. It sounds powerful, it is powerful, so you'd think then, easy enough choice then, right? No, actually, because I think that the MP412 Rex comes out on top for two main reasons, fire rate and reload time. First, both weapons, when fired, have pretty much the exact same, I guess you could say pattern, whenever you're pretty much firing as fast as you can, but the Rex does it faster. And for the Executioner, you have to reload each of its rounds, whereas the Rex reloads all six rounds in one go. There's a debate to be had there since you can stop it with the reload and fire the executioner whenever you need to, but I think it's just one of the aspects that makes the Rex better personally. <laughs> Lastly, the other category. The one for the weird guns out there, the outcasts. The ones that don't fit into regular gun society, but that are beautiful nonetheless. This is by far the highest, lowest level unlock at rank 36. It's actually... <laughs> It's actually kind of high for, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyway, we get the first other secondary, that being the Super Shorty. It's a 2 plus 1 cut down Remington 870, which is also in the game, of course, but boasting pretty okay shotgun damage, really good gun, definitely deserving of the time it took to get over 1,500 kills on it. <sighs> and oh boy, here we go. The sassiest gun in Phantom Forces, the SAS 308. Unlocked at rank 132, it's just, it's just garbage. <laughs> can't even say it without a voice crack. <laughs> it's a single shot break action pistol that can't even one shot without a headshot unless you buy a conversion for it. Or grind up literally 1,550 kills with this thing, which no one should do in their right mind. <laughs> it's got a stupid low fire rate, obviously, it's a single shot break action. And while very unique, it's just very painful to look at and to use. It's the sweaty man's dream, no doubt, with it being more of a skill-based weapon, but in turn, I think that the super shorty is better and definitely wins out in this part. <laughs> Conclusion though, adding them all up, they're about the same, seven to six in favor of the lower level weapons being better. Clearly, there are both good and bad, low and high level weapons, each posting a mix of their own playstyles, attachments, conversions, and models. But as we can see, it's fairly balanced. At the end of the day though, it's up to you what you wanna use and what you enjoy. But if you're new to the game or just a lower level, don't feel super pressured into feeling like you have to grind for credits or like you can't play well because you just have the AK-12, which in itself is still a fantastic weapon. Most of the guns in this game are fairly decent and you should only feel like you ever have to grind levels and credits for the guns that you personally want, not just because something is a higher level. Well, what do you think? Am I horribly wrong and stupid? Feel free to yell and scream in the comments instead of having a constructive argument because the YouTube comments are just, just wild. Subscribe if you're new, join the Discord server, become a channel member like these amazing people up on screen, all that cool stuff, and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace. Subscribe for more. Fidget toy or something that I can just squeeze until it pops whenever I'm at my desk. We're wanting the stress ball explosion. <sighs> Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>